So, good morning. The Commission meets today in public session this morning to hear from staff on recent enhancements to security and protection of radiation sources. The staff's anticipated path forward on source security and development of the 2014 Radiation Source Protection and Security Task Force uh, and development of the quadrennial report to the President and Congress. After the public session, the Commission staff and selected members of the Radiation Source Protection and Security Task Force will meet for a closed session to discuss finalization of the task force report. I want to note while that the second session is closed, the task force report will be made publicly available once it's finalized and sent to the President and Congress. I anticipate that the report will be completed sometime in early August. The events of 9-11 put an emphasis on security of risk-significant radioactive sources in the United States from potential terrorist threats, including acts of sabotage threat, theft, or use of radiation sources in radiological dispersal devices or radioactive exposure devices, better known as dirty bombs. The Radiation Source Protection and Security Task Force was formed to evaluate and provide recommendations relating to the security of radiation sources in the United States to the U.S. President and Congress on a quadrennial basis. As the chair of that task force, I appreciate all the hard work that the staff has put into working through the interagency process to draft and consolidate comments on the 2014 task force report. I'd also like to thank the agencies that have participated in the task force. Your efforts are greatly appreciated and have resulted in many key accomplishments in the area of source security since the task force was established by the Energy Policy Act of 2005. So we're going to begin this meeting with a session of presentations from the panel. Uh, we have about 35 minutes, I think, for the presentations. Be, would either of my fellow commissioners have any comments? No? All right, then I will turn it over to Mark Satorius, our Executive Director for Operations. Yeah, good morning, Chairman. Good morning, Commissioners. This morning you're going to hear from the staff and the Organization of Agreement States on their perspective regarding the agency's more recent activities in the area of source protection and security. With me today are Brian Holian, the Acting Director of the Office of Federal and State Materials and Environmental Management Programs. Mike Welling, the chair of the Organization of Agreement States and the director of the Commonwealth of Virginia's Radioactive Materials Program. Adelaide Guintanelli, chief of the Source Management and Protection Branch in FSME. And Randy Ragland, senior inspector in Region 1 and also the team lead of Region 1's Part 37 team. Today, the staff will highlight topics such as the rollout and implementation of the new Part 37 that was added to the Code of Federal Regulations, finalize the third report to the President and Congress from the Radiation Source Protection and Security Task Force, and efforts to address the recent reports from the Government Accounting Office. But before we jump on those topics, I'd like to take just a little time to briefly summarize the history of source security over the last decade and highlight some of NRC's accomplishments in these areas. Can I have the second slide, please? <clears throat> Following 9-11, NRC worked internally and with other state agencies to identify priority actions for enhancing the security of risk-significant radioactive materials and facilities. In 2003, NRC began, began issuing security orders using a graded approach, starting with large irradiator licensees manufacturers and distributors, and licensees who ship large quantities of radioactive materials. Finally, NRC worked with the agreement states to develop the increased controls requirements. In 2007, NRC and agreement states issued the last set of orders to approximately 2,800 licensees. Since then, we've continued inspecting licensees for compliance with security requirements, and we began our public process to establish security rules in the federal regulations that would replace the orders. In March 2012, the Commission approved a final proposed rule that incorporated requirements from the orders and included lessons learned from our implementation of those orders. In March 2013, 
10 CFR Part 37 was issued with a compliance date for NRC licensees of March 2014. While we've made great strides in improving the security of radioactive materials, we've also worked diligently to improve the tracking and management of radioactive materials in the United States. In 2008, the agency deployed the National Source Tracking System and began shaping what, was now, what is now the Integrated Source Management Portfolio. We've done that by adding web-based licensing and the license verification system. These source management tools, combined with NRC's security requirements, create an integrated and comprehensive program for the management and control of radioactive sources in the United States. Can I have slide three, please? NRC inspectors have extensive experience evaluating the security orders and have recently been inspecting against 10 CFR Part 37. Staff plans to gather two years of operat operational experience, such as NRC inspection findings and agreement state implementation experiences, to continue to identify ways to improve source security and 10 CFR Part 37. I will now turn to Brian Holney and the Act.